Greetings and praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to our Reflections of the Week, the last one for this week, where we've been considering the theme, A Redeemed Life. And today, our last topic is Life in Abundance. And we shall anchor it in John chapter 10, verse 10. Let us pray. Ever-living God, we thank you that you have loved us with an everlasting love and that you came to give us life in abundance. Speak to us so that we may live that abundant life in accordance with your purposes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So John chapter 10, verse 10, and this is Jesus speaking, and he says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Other versions like King James or English Standard Version say have it more abundantly. And I think that's what is more commonly used. We call it abundant life. In contrast to the thief, who is the evil one, who is Satan, who takes life, Jesus, our Redeemer, gives life. The life he gives right now is abundantly richer and fuller than it could be. Better still, it is eternal, yet it begins immediately. The moment one surrenders their life to Jesus Christ, then your abundant life to eternity begins now. Life in Christ is lived on a higher plane because of his overflowing forgiveness, because of his love, and because of his guidance. That's the basis of the abundant life. Have you taken Christ's offer of life? Because he is the one who is offering abundant life. And so what does it mean to live life in abundance? Let's explore three uh, ways or three means of living life in abundance. Number one, life in abundance means you are made alive in Christ for eternity. Before one can know the abundant life, one must know life. That is, one must be made alive through faith in Christ. One must first be alive or made alive in Christ in order to experience this abundant life. Abundant life is only available to the redeemed in Christ. The assurance Assurance of being alive in Christ is critical because we must be sure. We must never doubt, do I have life or not? And in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13, the apostle is inspired to assure one of their salvation. And this is what it says. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the life has life. Whoever has the son, sorry, has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. So whoever believes in God's Son has eternal life. He is all you will need. It, you don't need to wait for eternal life because it begins the moment you believe, as I've said. And it's God's promise. You don't need to work for, for it, because it is yours. God has given it to you free when you accept, accept his son, Jesus Christ. You don't need to worry about eternal life because you've been given by God himself. And he has guaranteed it by the Holy Spirit whom he gives to indwell you forever. Some people hope that they will receive eternal life. But John says we can know we have eternal life here and now, today. And our certainty is based on God's promise that he has given us eternal life through his son. And that is for you 
and for me to believe. Do you believe? Yes, eternal life is available by grace through faith in Jesus Christ who is our Redeemer. So life in abundance means made alive in Christ for eternity. Secondly, life in abundance means contentment. The abundant life, as scripture speaks of it, is above all the contented life. And the contentment comes because of having confidence that God is equal to every emergency, everything that happens to you, and indeed supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Contentment means satisfaction, and satisfaction means to have enough. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 7, it reads that, But godliness with contentment is great gain, great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and take nothing out of it. This statement is the key to spiritual growth and personal fulfillment. A redeemed life should honor God and center our desires on him. The Bible in Matthew 63 tells us to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things shall be ours. But we should also be content with what God is doing in our lives. And the secret of being content is drawing on Christ's power for strength. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So do you have great needs? Or are you discontented because you don't have what you want? Now we must remember to differentiate between wants and needs. Most people want to feel good and avoid discomfort, avoid pain and all that. But we may not get all that we want. What we need for us as believers is to learn to rely on God's promises. In Philippians 4.19, it is that my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God can supply all your needs. And we also need Christ's power to help us to be content. So two things, that God will supply all that we need and it is through Christ's power that we can be content. If you always want more, and sometimes, let me say many times we do as humans, ask God to remove that desire of wanting more and teach you contentment in every uh, circumstance. And he will supply all your needs, not all your want, but the Bible says all your needs. But he'll supply them in a way that he himself knows is best for you. So trusting Christ can change your, our attitudes. It can change our appetites from wanting everything to accepting his provision and the power to live for him and to live in contentment. And thirdly, life in abundance means serving others. Our ability, our abilities should be faithfully used in serving others, not for our own uh, selfish or exclusive enjoyment. Some of us or some people believe that they have the right to use their abilities as they please. And usually this becomes for selfish ends or for personal gain. On the other side of the scale, there are those who think they have no special abilities and therefore have nothing to offer anyone, and therefore don't even serve anybody or anything. But Peter addresses uh, both this in verse 10. In 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, everyone has some gifts, each one of you has some gifts. And here he mentions about speaking and serving. But we know that Paul in other epistles mentions other gifts. The best is to find what is your gift and use them for God's glory and for the good of others. When we use our abilities in serving others, we glorify God and they see Jesus in us 
and praise him for the help they have received. As it is written in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus said that let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Redemption gives new purpose for living. It gives us new ways of responding to circumstances and gives us new hope for the future. So the truth we see here is that redeemed believers have been saved from an empty and hopeless way of life to one of true freedom and joy, the abundant life. Are you living the abundant life? It is only found in Jesus Christ, who is our Redeemer. A redeemed life is one where the believer lives for the will of God, is clear-minded, has self-control, is prayerful and loving, and is living a life, his life or her life to the full. And it is only in Jesus Christ that one can achieve such a life. May God help us to live lives that are pleasing to him so that our deeds will bring him glory and not gratify desires of the flesh, even as we wait the return of our Savior, who is our Redeemer and Lord Jesus Christ. So may God help you. May God help me to experience the abundant life now and into eternity. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for teaching us this whole week about a redeemed life. We pray that you will grant us, by your grace, the desire to live such a life as provided by your Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed us from slavery to sin and live in the power of your Holy Spirit, all to your glory. We ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.